In this video, we'll do a code walkthrough of SAMSA's Java APIs and look at actual examples. SAMSA supports two Java APIs for building advanced stream processing applications. We have the low-level API or the task API, which is really powerful. This is because this is per message based and allows for greater control of processing logic at the level of an individual message. There is also the high-level API or the streams API. The high-level streams API provides you with a rich set of built-in operators like map, flat map, filter, windowing, joins, etc. This allows you to describe your processing pipeline as a directed acyclic graph of operations on individual message streams. Let's now look at how to build an actual application using each of these two APIs. Here are the steps involved in building an application using the low-level task API. The first step is describing your inputs, your outputs, and your stores. In this step, we'll describe the input systems and streams that your job is interacting with. For example, you want to consume from a specific Kafka cluster and you want to consume from a specific Kafka topic called as page view event. And let's say you want to output results to another topic called as filtered page views. SAMSA has a notion of a system descriptor that allows you to specify which system that you're interacting with. In this example, you might want to talk to a Kafka cluster that's for tracking data. A Kafka cluster can obviously have multiple topics, so SAMSA uses a notion of an input descriptor to specify what topic that you want to interact with. For each topic, you create an instance of an input descriptor. Similarly, your application can write to multiple output topics, and for each output topic, you should describe it by using an output descriptor. Recall that SAMSA also provides you access to fault-tolerant state stores. For example, you may want to update for each incoming message a count of the number of unique page views for that particular user. For this, SAMSA provides a table descriptor that allows you to describe the properties of your stores. These properties include the name of the store, whether the store should use RocksDB or not, and what are the key and value types of that store. Let's look at a more concrete example of how you can describe your inputs, your outputs, and your stores. To program using the low-level API, you'll need to implement a simple interface called as task application. The interface itself is quite simple. It just includes a single method called describe that allows you to specify your application. For example, at LinkedIn, we'll use the Lee Kafka system descriptor to specify that we want to talk to the aggregate tracking Kafka cluster. Now that you've specified our Kafka cluster, it's time to specify our input topic. For this, we will create a Lee Kafka input descriptor that specifies that we want to consume from a topic called page view event with a serializer for page view event dot class. Here is a more complete program. For each Kafka cluster that you want to interact with, you create an instance of Lee Kafka system descriptor. In this case, this points to the aggregate tracking Kafka cluster. Obviously, a Kafka cluster can have multiple topics. So for each input topic that you want to interact with, you create a corresponding Lee Kafka input descriptor. In this case, we provide the name of the topic that we want to consume from and the serializer for that topic. Once we have defined the input cluster and input topic, we just have to wire them up to our application by calling app descriptor dot with input stream. Now that we have described our inputs, the next step is to describe our application logic. In this case, the hello world task class contains your application logic 
and we wire the hello world task with your application by using the with task factory method. There are two primary interfaces for describing your application logic. For synchronous message processing, at the level of one message at a time, you can implement the stream task interface. In this model, SAMHSA delivers messages to your tasks one at a time and considers the message to be processed immediately after the process call returns. For processing each message asynchronously, SAMHSA also allows a built-in async API. In this model, you also get a callback associated with each message. You can invoke callback.complete when the processing associated with this message is completed. If it cannot be completed, you can invoke callback.failure. Let's look at some actual code. In this case, the hello world task for each message it receives, it increments a local counter, and it basically logs every thousandth message to the console. You can obtain the key and the value by calling get key and get message on the envelope respectively. You can also obtain metadata about each message. For example, what Kafka cluster this message was from, what Kafka topic this message was from, what partition this message was from by calling envelope.get system stream partition. You can also obtain the offset of that message. The next parameter of interest is the message collector. You can use the message collector to send output messages to any system of your choice. The third parameter is the coordinator, which is useful if you want precise control over when offsets should be committed in SAMHSA. Thanks for watching this video. To recap, we discussed how you can write an application using SAMHSA's task application API. This is a simple two-step process, defining your inputs, outputs, and stores using the descriptors, and then describing your processing logic using the stream task interface or the async stream task interface. In the next videos, we'll go over the high-level API and how you can use it to write your applications.